has been secretly harvesting spirit vines from the swamp. You messed up. You messed up big time. Chapter 9, Beyond the Wilds. That's my boy, Ryu. He used to live in the basement. This guy. He's been doing important Air Nation stuff all over the world. Good for him. Mom, Dad, I'm trying to work. He dyed his hair? Uh, why is that vine coming toward us? I don't see anything about that on the cards. <laughs> I'm gonna poke it with a stick. Oh, oh! Wow, he's actually... Oh, never mind. Forget it. Moms, am I right? It's amazing they actually found more use for these characters. I knew they had a big role to play. Getting... Captured by spirit vines. It's good to see Naga getting some time with Korra for once. Everything okay? No. no. Kuvira has my family and no one seems to care but me. I get where Opal's coming from. It's gotta be really frustrating to know you have all this power at your disposal, but then to watch people sort of stand by while your family is captured. I just felt a weird surge of spiritual energy coming from the spirit wilds. Something's wrong. Something's very wrong. Oh wow, that is a fantastic reading. I like that the tree's fighting back. We have to tell Raiko. This might help him convince the other leaders to finally take her down. I feel like Kuvira might have been fine in the long term if she had just not gone so far. There was nothing anybody could do about this before without completely overstepping the Earth Kingdom boundaries. And I know just how to get rid of her. We tell her she won an all-expense-paid vacation to a tropical island. Then when she gets there, we reveal it was a trap. The island's a prison! Genius. Oh, got her! This guy. <laughs> Tenzin space. I see that they're still treating Wu as the rightful leader of the Earth Kingdom. I also like how Tenzin, even though he's not on the council, still has a voice in this council-like meeting. Uh, I'm just spitballing here. We march in with an army of highly trained badger moles. Oh, that's, uh, Fire Lord. What's going on here? For the record, I told Raiko he should have invited you. <laughs> you invited him, but not me? We just thought. Perhaps we called you back into action a little too soon. Salt in the wounds. Guys! Oh, perfect! You're all here! Yes. Bolin? Yeah. We have top secret information for you! Good, I'm glad. The only way to protect ourselves is with a preemptive strike. My airbenders right. won't be part of an unprovoked attack. The Fire Nation has spent too much of its history fighting mm. nonsense wars. And I refuse to drag my nation into another one unless there's no other choice. That's so cool. This show does such an outstanding job of tracing ideas through generations. Like, each iteration of families seems like a natural thing. Like, I was actually thinking she would probably be against an attack just given the Fire Nation's history. She's got to be extra sensitive to that if she is someone who cares. You see this time and time again in the show, like, uh, like with Earth Queen, may she burn in hell. She had a chip on her shoulder about strength based on the weakness she perceived in her father. We'll go on the defensive and fortify security on the borders. In that, you'll have my help. I like her. It's a little late for Sari. I sided with Kuvira and I helped her take over the Earth Kingdom and topple your home and get your mom captured and your brothers and your dad. Wow, that does sound really bad when I say it out loud like that. Pardon me, lovebirds, but I need a word with Opal. Give him a minute at least, come on. So, our family... Looks like we're going to have to save them ourselves. Ooh. This is an unsanctioned and dangerous mission into enemy territory. We'll have to do it alone. Wow. What a Beifong thing to do. Just ignore the decisions of all the major world leaders. I'll do it myself. With my niece. Opal Lin is a cool I'm team so too. I'm glad you're back. I was worried about you. We all were. That's what I want to see. You tried to warn me about Kuvira, and I ran off anyway like an idiot. You were right, and I'm just an idiot. I hope that I'll be able to earn your trust again. You already have it. Ever since Kuvira kicked my butt, no one even wants me around. We want you around. And Bolin. You're not an idiot. You were just doing what you thought was right. Oh, I love you guys. Me too. And I really want to hug again. That makes me so happy to see. I understand Opal's point of view, but like, I love Bolin so much, like I just want to see him loved. I have a lot of faith in him. I also love that they're there for Korra. It's so good. The whole thing, them together is so good. Especially after the last episode, seeing how far they've come together. Whoa, nice. No! Awesome. Help! Where's Kai? Did he not make it because of budget cuts? Be careful. Cora, look. What are those? 
Are those people in there? They are. Looks like Janora. Maybe if I meditate into the spirit world, I can free them. She does that so well now. This isn't the spirit world. Here. What the heck? I got it out. You'll never get it out. Whoa. Cora. Wow. It's like he's blocking me from meditating into the spirit world. So I guess that was a vision. I guess she has a lot to deal with still mentally about Zaheer and the way things went. I want to face Zaheer. Wow. Cora, he's too dangerous. Even when he's locked up, he can't be trusted. Are we going to see Zaheer again? You've lost faith in me too, haven't you? I'm just so worried for Janora. I can't imagine if something happened to you too. Tenzin, please. Zaheer's in prison deep in the mountains outside the city. We are going to see him. Yeah, I didn't take that as him not believing in Korra. It's just him being his normal, warm-hearted, worrying self. I don't know if you've heard, but Opal's kind of mad at me. I was hoping you could help me win her back. What do I feel like this is a bad idea? What do you got there? Oh no, what did he do? A picnic, just for the two of us. So this note Pabu brought me saying you broke both of your legs was just a ruse? I knew it. That was clumsy. This will totally make me forget that you worked for Kuvir, ah. the person who captured my family and is probably torturing them right now. So yeah, let's just sit down and have a great picnic because we're so in love. Ah, uh, it hurts. <laughs> yeah, I think Bolin's missing the point a little bit. Looking at it from Opal's perspective, I think she probably just wants someone to understand her. Because everyone is sort of turning her away. From her eyes, no one's taking action, which means no one cares, except for Lin. So I think Bolin just listening to her openly and hearing her would probably go a really long way in patching things up. It's not even necessarily an apology. It's like just not expecting too much of her right now and just being there for her without expectation. I think that's probably a good way to go for Bolin. Instead of faking like he broke his legs, because that's never the way. I'm sorry you had to see that, Pabu. Poor Pabu. He's the real victim. It's nice to be welcomed back with open arms. Actually, I brought you here out of necessity. Oh yeah, he kidnapped him. Especially after you tried to have me kidnapped. Right. Allegedly. <laughs> Everything you do is allegedly. That's because he's smart. My company and bombed the Southern Water Tribe Cultural Center? Allegedly. Right now, I need you to put aside your differences. We're going to need the two brightest minds in the city working together. Yes. Fine. I'll help. There we go. But don't even think about double-crossing me again. Kavira doesn't stand a chance. Asami and Barak, it's over. I'm so excited we get to see Zaheer again. I think if I see Zaheer chained up, I'll finally realize that he's not a threat anymore. I don't think it's that easy. I've heard that a treatment for intense fear is gradual re-exposure. Baby steps towards confronting that thing. Not this, which is just fully confronting it head-on immediately. It seems like a huge jump. So, I hope it goes well. I want to see Cora healthy again. Yeah, and I feel like she's wound up in knots, so she's she's extra vulnerable. Wow. He looks great. I will no longer be scared of you. I guess it didn't work. You still seem scared. Yeah, just just by her making that statement, it shows that she's scared. You wouldn't say I'm not scared of you to someone that isn't a threat. Zaheer's just playing with her. This was a mistake. I know why you're here. You can't go into the spirit world. You can meditate into the spirit world from here? This is your problem. Wow. My problem is you! Blaming me is a crutch to make you feel better. But it's not helping you recover. Whoa, Zaheer the guru? This is crazy. Zaheer, just when you think you haven't figured out. This is on some Silence of the Lambs level here. But maybe it's time I realize I'll never be the same. Neither of us are the same as before. I learned to fly, but now I'm bound in chains. You have all the power in the world and the freedom to use it. But you choose to hold yourself down. You think your power has limits. I say it's limitless. Whoa. Before, you were always talking about chaos and freedom. Then you took out the Earth Queen and created the worst dictator the Earth Kingdom has ever seen. Whoa, Zaheer actually gets to answer for for his philosophy. This is interesting. This is so exciting. I've heard rumors about her, but I didn't know she achieved so much power. I think I can help. Let me lead you into the spirit world. No way. I can't trust you. Maybe not. But if you had any other options, you wouldn't be here now, would you? 
he may have been enemies once, but for now, our interests align. That's amazing. One of my favorite things about this scene so far is when Zaheer said that neither of us are the same. It's such a cool idea, and it's so true, you know, like, they both have been changed for their experiences. I'm not a huge fan of... Uh, an enemy of an enemy is a friend, right? I don't think that just because someone shares the same objective makes them an ally. But with Zaheer, I feel like one thing about him is you can always trust him to be who he is. And so what he's saying to Korra feels genuine to me. And I get the feeling from that scene that he actually does have remorse for what he did, at least to some extent. Like he actually does realize that what he did was an error. You know, sometimes you get help in the weirdest places. That's just how life is. The people who clash the most probably have a lot in common, probably more in common than they want to think about. You can. Accept what happened to you. Don't fear what might have been. I have no control! Don't be afraid. Hold on. Do you know where Janora and the others are? No, but you do. Thank you, Zaheer. And there's... wow. I think it's a really nice touch having Korra say, I have no control. For me, that feels like a real thing when you're going through some huge mental obstacle, right? Like part of it is you struggling with it so much. In a way, it almost solidifies it. If you're stuck in a really deep mental hole, trying to fight your way out of it mentally is kind of, it's almost pointless because the tools you're using are tainted. If your thinking has gone wrong somewhere, it's hard to dig yourself out through more thought. And Korra obviously has been ruminating on this over and over again in her mind, playing it out. All the bad things that could have happened, how she's a failure, what if I'm not ready next time? You know, all these things playing out in her head again and again. I love the metaphor of Zaheer just telling her to just get through it. You know, like it's okay. Like just let go. He said he used the words hold on, which is not perfectly fitting for what I'm saying, but I think what he meant is like, just weather it, just let it take you, basically. And then she blasted through to the other side. And I think that kind of breakdown is really useful in getting through these obstacles. And then just trust that you'll emerge on the other side. You must bend the energy within. But I'm powerless in the spirit world. No, you're most powerful here. Kind of gross, but okay. Oh, I feel all spirity. I'm so glad you're safe. I love that Tenzin's faith in Korra was rewarded. I feel whole again. Do you think you're finally able to forget about what Zaheer did to you? No. Can't forget, but... But I am finally able to accept what happened. Right. And I think that's gonna make me stronger. Yeah, that's the difference. That's a big difference. All right, listen, before you go, I just want to tell you that I understand how you feel. I know there's nothing I could do or no big gesture that can make up for all my mistakes, but that doesn't mean I'm gonna stop trying to win you back. Because... I love you. It's better. It's an improvement over the broken leg thing. There is one thing you could do to win me back. What is it? Yes, I'll do anything. Come on a secret mission with us. Ooh. Where to? Zaofu. We're going to rescue my family. Nice. I mean, it was a stacked team with Lin and Opal adding Bolin in his lava bending. You'll be all right. I hope. <laughs> I love that episode. Though, Korra as a hero thing really threw me through a loop. I was not expecting that at all. I love that they allow some fluidity and humanity to Zaheer's character, you know? Like, it's way too easy to just be in the good guy, bad guy camp, right? And Zaheer obviously did some really terrible things, and you can't undo that. But it's great that he actually could provide some value, that he actually could do a good thing. You know, I appreciate that. In a way, it speaks really well of him that Korra came to him at her most vulnerable state, and he had all the power to just destroy her. Like, he could have devastated her. But as someone who in his own twisted way, does have real commitment to certain ideals. He did a good thing for Korra, which is amazing. It's so complicated, but cool. And I'm really happy that Korra was able to get some sort of emotional closure, it seems, on what she was going through. And part of that was confronting her fears head on, and another part of that was just allowing herself to be sort of taken and not be so resistant to what was going on. And now, I'm so excited to see the next episode. I, I think it's called Operation Beifong, and I think I know what that's gonna be about, so can't wait. I'll see you next week for the last week of Korra.